Hi guys, welcome to Catch It First. Today we've got Samsung's second super huge mobile phone. Uh, this is the successor to the Galaxy Note and it's meant to be better in every single way compared to its predecessor um, featuring an even larger screen, 5.5 inch versus last year's 5.3. You've got a quad core processor running at 1.6 gigahertz versus last year's 1.4 gigahertz quad uh, dual core so definitely an increase in uh, processor performance there. You've got the same 8 megapixel camera but with the bumped up software you're going to get a lot more features with that. You've got flash which was also on the last year's version obviously. Um, you've got a lot thinner, you've got a thinner um, device which is going to make it a lot easier to hold and basically what Samsung is pushing with this phone is that you have a larger screen than the old Galaxy Note but in a smaller body which means it's not going to feel so um, large in your hand. Uh, so to get a comparison of how, just, just so you can see how large this is, um, I'll just bring up the, there we go look, this is the Sony Xperia S, still a pretty large phone, 4.8 inch screen and you can see, if I bring it up here, still much much bigger the um, Note is, so really huge phone and it's it's a 9.4 millimeter thick phone so really quite thin, less than a centimeter it's not as thin as say an iPhone or a lot of a lot of phones nowadays are actually a lot thinner uh, Galaxy S3 is thinner but uh, the way it tapers makes it feel quite thin and yeah it doesn't feel too big in the hand actually um, a lot of people are put off by this just down to the fact that it's a 5.5 inch super phone um, but really it does fit in your hand quite well um, maybe it's not quite as palm friendly as smaller phones but to be honest it's perfectly usable uh, it fits in my pocket fine Fits if you, if you keep it in a bag it will fit in that fine it's really uh, not as big as what people think it is but saying that the screen is wonderfully uh, gives you a lot more real estate than other screens and you certainly notice that. Uh, so let's get into the full review now. So on the front you have this beautiful 5.5 inch screen. This is running at a resolution of 1280 by 720 which is a gigantic resolution. Um, We've been seeing these kind of resolutions on laptops. Even even today, you you get 14 inch, 13 inch laptops using this resolution. So, really brilliant display. And if I turn it on, you can see really crystal clear display. Don't worry about the flickering; that's just on the camera. Um, but really crystal clear display. And people were thinking, um, well. This has the same resolution as the old Note, but the screen's slightly bigger, so obviously the screen's going to look worse. But that's not the case. Uh, it uses a slightly different technology, well, a vastly different technology to the old screen, which basically means you get a lot more clear images. And that's definitely evident on this phone. Um, so you've got one button at the bottom, one physical button, surrounded by uh, two soft key buttons, a menu button, and a back button the standard Android things. On the front we've got a 1.3 megapixel camera, you've got sensors, a uh, proximity sensor and a light sensor. It's basically, well it's quite self-explanatory really. Um, you've got your uh, speaker bar there for voice calls and there's an LED notification light up here which doesn't actually show up when it's not turned on, which is quite nice. Uh, but it'll flash blue or green or red depending on um, what the message is. As you can obviously see, this is the white version of the phone, which is a really nice colour actually. Um, quite elegant looking, really, really good. Uh, it also comes in blue and black, just like the Galaxy S. On the back, you've got this back cover obviously, but one thing that Samsung have always done is they've added really thin back covers to their phones which you can see with this and what that kind of does is well if I'm bending it here you can't hear anything but if I put the back on the phone it makes it feel a little bit um, 
cheap and not particularly well built. Although the phone itself is well built, putting the back cover on makes it feel really terrible. You can hear it creaking. I'm not trying to bend it a lot, I'm just just holding it and flexing it slightly and you can definitely hear it creaking around so that's not a brilliant sign but on the whole the build quality is actually quite good so don't be put off by that and this might be an engineering sample as it's a review unit so if you buy one it could be uh, a better build quality. Um, on top we've got the 3.5mm headphone jack obviously just for plugging in your headphones on the right hand side we've got the lock button which I actually prefer the lock button being on the right hand side because if it was on the top it would be a nightmare to get to but having it on the right hand side whether you're right handed or left handed just works better on the left hand side you've got the uh, volume rocker which is perfectly fine nice and clicky you can definitely notice when you've clicked it and that's about it you've got the speaker down here which is actually really loud and clear. It definitely wakes you up in the morning when the alarm goes off and you can hear it from a mile away. It's really, really quite loud. Um, this stylus here, this is the S Pen. Now, don't be put off by the fact it's got a stylus. This is not the kind of stylus that you get on the old PDAs. This is quite a clever thing that more clo is uh, more closely related to uh, a graphics tablet pen. Uh, I'll show you more about that later, but that just slots nicely in there. Like there, sorry. Right, on the bottom, you've got a micro USB port, which, as you can tell, is just for uh, syncing and charging, so that's all good. And that's about it. That, there's nothing else um, on the outside of the phone, so now let's get on to the inside of the phone. Right, so here we are on the lock screen. Um, Samsung's ripple effect lock screen which you just slide up to unlock um, or anywhere just to slide it around to unlock it and basically uh, you can slide up from any of these icons if you want to go to the dialer there you go straight to the dialer if you want to go to uh, the camera there you go straight to the camera which is really good um, the home screen you're presented with uh, looks like uh, standard Android. This is running Jelly Bean, but Samsung have put on their own software, which is TouchWiz. But it's a new version of TouchWiz, uh, not like what you had on the older Galaxy S2s. This is more closely linked to what you get on the uh, Galaxy, Galaxy S3. So a really nice, smooth... Smooth interface there. Really like it, and the, you can see the animations are all really fancy and nice. Um, you can do a pinch to zoom effect, effect, I mean, gesture, um, to get to this screen where you can rearrange home screens, you can delete them, you can go to them, you can do whatever you can add more ones so really uh, nice usability there um, you get Samsung haven't, hasn't really changed too much with Jelly Bean um, but what they have changed is just that comes up with downloaded apps instead of the Play Store and you've got infinite looping icons there you have to you don't just go seamlessly into the widgets drawer when you get to the end of your apps you have to tap on widgets to get them up but that's that's fine it's just it's just down to personal preference now Samsung have added uh, quite a cool feature with the uh, Galaxy Note 2 and that is that you get uh, I'll just zoom out Whenever you take the stylus S Pen out, automatically goes to this uh, screen here, which uh, basically gives you lots of options on what you can do and what it recommends you doing with the S Pen, so you can make a note quite quickly. Don't worry, you can definitely do a lot better handwriting than that. I'm just working at an angle, so it's a bit difficult. So, really cool feature, how it adapts to 
um, how you how you're using the phone and you put the the S Pen away and it goes back to a normal home screen so really cool feature uh, there we go uh, Samsung have always incorporated their own uh, little features uh, which actually come in really like uh, useful like in the phone sorry the contacts app uh, all your contacts sync with Facebook automatically uh, and basically if you wanted to phone someone then all you have to do is slide across to the right and it will start calling them and to text them instead once it goes back you slide to the uh, slide to the left like this so a really cool feature there um, that Samsung have incorporated. We first saw that on the Galaxy S2 but it's a cool feature nonetheless and they also just add their own touch to it basically um, just adding uh, these, these bluey kind of icons that look quite cool and basically make together a nice theme um, but depending on whether you prefer uh, a stock Android experience or not will uh, govern whether you like TouchWiz or not but on the whole I like it quite a bit now Samsung have incorporated hubs on the Galaxy S, uh, the Galaxy Note for example you've got the game hub here learning hub you have music hub and I think there's another one video hub there you go um, so you have all these what they call hubs which basically act as um, well, yeah, they act as hubs for gaming in whatever whatever um, hub you're on. Uh, what I don't like about this is that they're not particularly well made, and um, they can cause confusion between like someone might not want to might not know whether to go to the game hub or to go to the Play Store. I mean, I'd always, I'd always choose the Play Store because it's just I I know that that's Google's thing, but if you're new to Android you might not know that the Play Store is the official one and you might go on to the Game Hub and it's just not very good really uh, I haven't really tried out the Learning Hub or anything else uh, just simply because um, I don't like things like this it's not really for me uh, one thing though is the Music Hub, the Music Hub's quite cool I suppose Basically, the Music Hub is similar to Spotify in that you get um, you stream music basically wherever you are. Um, but I don't I don't like things like this. I prefer um, something like Spotify, which is universal across all devices, rather than something that's just Samsung. Because, well, if you were gonna keep an Android phone. Uh, get another Android phone after this, but it wasn't Samsung, say it was HTC or Motorola or something, you know, you wouldn't be able to use this service anymore. You've been paying for nothing, really. Um, which is why I prefer things like Spotify or or like something central to Google rather than this. But if you are going to keep with Samsung, then you can just make a Samsung account and sign up for the Music Hub. So, still quite a cool feature depending on how you look at it. Now the feature that everyone is going to be getting the Galaxy Note 2 for is most likely its note taking abilities, especially if you're someone that needs to take notes a lot, um, then this is going to be very very handy for you. Uh, the S Note application is really really good, Ooh, whoops, sorry. you can see it gives you uh, lots of templates to make notes from, so if you're looking for a Make a, making business notes, you can make mind maps, all sorts. It's a really, really powerful tool. And you just go, uh, there you go. You go into the editing mode and you can start playing around with this and changing it to your needs. So it's really a brilliant, brilliant application. Um, you can see a note that I made that I've been making, you know. You, really brilliant you can take I, I scanned this in and just cut it out with the S Pen really quite cool um, 
I'll show you a feature which they show on the advert. Um, so you're in a scenario. You're you're on uh, online. Like you see a picture, and you want to take a screenshot of it, but you don't want to take a screenshot of the whole thing. You just want to take a screenshot of a little bit. So basically, what you can do is press down the button on the S Pen, and then drag a circle or drag some kind of selection around, and then quickly loads that, makes a selection. Then you can share that with a number of applications. Well, it's just automatically copied it to my clipboard there, but if I just do it again. You can see you can share it with the scrapbook, which is just where you chuck lots of stuff on your clipboard into. You've got S Note, email, messaging, Bluetooth, all these apps, and you can install more apps. It's not just a predefined list of apps. Apps that you install that are compatible always work with it. So really cool feature there. And it makes it quite a powerful tool for if you are taking notes. So that's really cool. Now on to web browsing, uh, I'll use the web, brow the web browser that's uh, installed with the device, which is just called Internet. It's quite a fast browser, uh, you put it in landscape, portrait, you know, everything loads fast. If you go on to, I always use the BBC website. as a benchmark of a browser's abilities and then I go on to the desktop site you can see it loaded the website very very quickly there and then you can just scroll around ever so smoothly this is just as smooth as using an Apple device people often loathe Android because it's slow or they, they think it's slow but when you pack powerful hardware like this along with the latest version of Android you get pretty much an unbeatable um, matching there to do with web browsing and you can get you can make a new tab by just pinch to zooming when you're already at the uh, when you're already zoomed out and then you can choose between an incognito page or just a new tab and as you can tell it's slightly different to the standard web browser that you get on Android uh, you, like on uh, the standard web browser on Android, you get tabs rather than these pages, which I actually do prefer on the standard Android, to be honest, because you can just swipe away tabs to close them, whereas on this you have to click the no entry sign there, which is why I prefer using Chrome, which in my opinion is a better web browser than the standard one built in. And really does take advantage of the um, power of the phone more using hardware acceleration and all that good stuff you can see uh, if I go onto the desktop site loads just as fast and if anything is even smoother so really brilliant web browser and you can just slide tabs away like that rather than clicking a small icon in the corner. So really good web browsing. Given the massive screen on this phone, uh, you could be forgiven for thinking that the battery life would be quite terrible. Uh, but in the back of the phone here, I'll just take the cover off, we have this humongous 3100mAh battery, which actually keeps it going well over a day actually. Um, even when I've been quite bored playing games for quite a lot of the time, it still lasts way over a day, and in some cases it can be pushing almost a day and a half. So, a really, really brilliant battery in here, and that's really saying something considering the um, screen size. So, on the inside of this phone, technical specifications include a 1.7 GHz quad-core processor, Samsung's own processor, so this is going to be a rocketing fast phone. 
well, you can, you've probably been able to see it. It loads everything very, very quick. Uh, it's just really, really brilliant. Everything loads really quick and multitasking is fluid and smooth in every sense of the word. Uh, the 1 gig of RAM means that you can keep lots and lots of applications open. You can see here I've got many, many applications open and it doesn't slow down the phone at all. Really, really fast phone. Now, the screen, as I've already said, is the same resolution as smaller phones like this, uh, but looks just as good, really. If I open the gallery and go into video you can see a video that Samsung put together themselves uh, for use with this phone and you can see just how brilliant the screen is if it focuses So a really fantastic screen for watching video on one of the best, if not the best. And you get really good functions like the pop out player, which basically no matter where you are, you can carry on watching your video, which is fantastic. And last of all, the last brilliant feature on this phone is multitasking. It is brilliant. Press and hold the back button and your uh, it comes up with a list of apps here. So say you want to be YouTubing. So you pull YouTube up there. And say you want to check your Facebook as well. Then you just bring Facebook up and put it in the other half and there you go you've got full multitasking there and every app that I've used works brilliantly with this and it's not dumb down in any way it works 100% and then you just it, it's marvellous <laughs> really really brilliant works in landscape as well and if you want a little bit more space on say Facebook just drag it across and there you go and if you want more space to watch a video but you want to check your Facebook a little bit then you can watch the video whilst being on your Facebook there and the video will be in full screen for that small bit there so an absolutely brilliant phone from Samsung with a price of around £47 a month, uh, it's by no means the cheapest phone on the market, uh, but you can safely bet that you'll get this phone cheaper than any of the iPhones, and you can get it at about the same price as a Galaxy S3. Uh, so I'd like to say a massive thanks to Vodafone uh, for getting this out to us. They do a really good job of getting us the latest handset, so uh, a lot of uh, really grateful to them. And uh, hopefully we'll get some more devices in the future. So thanks for watching. Uh, really brilliant.